Adelaide, Darwin, and Alice Springs are three completely different worlds. Um, Adelaide is, is hot and dry and it gets a little bit of cold uh, in their winter, so their seasons are flopped. Christmas is the hottest day of the year. July 4th is pretty cold. Um, so it's a little weird to, to have that hot Christmas or um, have the, the, the different seasons that are changed. Alice Springs is almost, uh, it's same. It's very dry. It's a lot of red rock, red dirt. Uh, I can remember some of the missionaries that would go up to Alice Springs and then come back. Their shirts would be almost like a little red just tint to them. So you might need to pick up some new shirts if you get transferred out of Alice Springs. Just something to, to think about. Just because the the dirt and the, the red rock, the red sand all over the place, um, it is a different world. And then Darwin is extremely tropical. They have two seasons. They have the, the wet season and the dry season. That's it. The wet season, it will rain every single day. And if you're from, from Utah or a drier climate, uh, you don't know what rain is until you've been to Darwin. And it, it is so, so wet. I can remember my shoes just being wet every day just because the air is humid it's so hard to get stuff to dry um, I can remember um, me and my companion were on our bikes and this was my first day in Darwin and you know it, it rains it, during the wet season it rains every day but we didn't know that I mean we both were actually new missionaries being transferred to that area and we heard this sound. We're like, what the heck is that sound? And we're just sitting on our bikes. And you can hear the rain coming before it even gets to you. I mean, that's how hard it rains. And it started pouring on us. Luckily, there are bus stops all over the place that are covered. And so those will be your go-to spots if you get uh, up in Darwin. You'll cruise your bike or run to the bus stop. Usually it'll rain for 10 or 15 minutes and it goes away. Um, but yeah, it's, it's three different worlds. It's really cool. You'll have, if you go to either of them, you will have a very different experience um, at, at each of them. And they are both all have their uh, positive aspects about them for sure. Very hot, very hot in all three places, uh, at least in the summer. Hot and humid up in Darwin hot and dry the other two places so um, definitely something to be ready for um, and to you know be willing to still work just as hard in those days as well one of the things I thought that uh, you know when I got off the plane I thought I was gonna see kangaroos you know in the front yards of people's houses really is not the case I mean they're pretty much like deer you know you'll see them out in the uh, out in the you know out in the open fields if you're way out in the middle of nowhere you'll see them unfortunately they've gotten hit by cars and stuff like that crossing the road but the main place you'll see them is in the zoo um, so you have the chance to go to like some wildlife parks where they just sort of hop around they just they don't keep them in uh, little enclosures which is really nice you can go feed them and you can pet them and, and all that stuff but yeah, don't expect to see just kangaroos all over the place because that's really not the case. Um, and another thing to um, sort of say, do your research on the, uh, I guess, poisonous bugs, uh, just different things in Australia. That's something I did not do. And when I look back on my time there, I mean, obviously, I feel 100%, um, you know, protected, but, uh, you know, as a missionary, but there were some experiences, you know, now that I've learned of all the, the poisonous and dangerous things that Australia has, I am blown away that I did not get, you know, bitten by a snake or, you know, crocodiles or whatever, 
because there are so many different things and, and really I was sort of clueless to that and sort of learned as I went. So I definitely, I mean, don't let us scare you, obviously. It's, it's very much like, you know, if you live in Utah, we have dangerous spiders and stuff like that, but you never see them. It's very similar, but you just want to make sure that you're going um, or you're not doing stuff that's going to get you in dangerous situations because you very easily could. Um, in Darwin, they have uh, saltwater crocodiles, and, and uh, I mean, they're the most, one of the most aggressive uh, animals in the world. And, and if you get the chance to serve up there, you'll see all the time on like headlines of the newspaper of like crocodile attacks and stuff like that. And I, I mean, I was just sort of ignorant to it. I can remember on one of our preparation days, we were, we had these little hand fishing reels. Uh, it was around like a little spool. And one of them, um, you know, we just went off the side of the, this little river that like ran into the beach. And we were right there on the sand just fishing and on, on our preparation day. And so many times there have been crocodile attacks or dogs getting, you know, or kangaroos or whatever. And man, I, I just think about how lucky I was and how it's important to, to know what your dangers are. Obviously, don't be, don't let that deter you or anything like that, but just, you know, educate yourself. Um, I mean, they even have poisonous fish. They have, uh, a lot, obviously, a lot of snakes, a lot of spiders. My first day, going back to that first day in Darwin, uh, me and my, my companion were, were new missionaries going to that area, so we really knew nothing about it. We were walking through uh, this, this field. We were just going to cut through it to go to our next uh, appointment. And we um, were walking in the middle. All of a sudden, my companion just drops to the ground. I'm like, what the heck? And I look up, and there are these birds just hovering over us. There's about five or six of them. And they just start just sort of dive bombing us. And we got our backpacks and we're swinging them over our head and running. We don't even know what's happening. And there are a couple locals that were just sort of laughing at us. And, and we started talking to them and they're like, you guys must be not from here. And we're like, yeah, this is our first day here. And he's like, well, those are birds called plovers. And they nest in the fields. And so we were walking right through the middle of their nest and we had no idea. And if you look up the, the plover bird on Google, it's uh, P-L-O-V-E-R, they have these little spikes on their wings. And so they come down and they can sort of spike you in the back of the head or area. And so it was a pretty dangerous situation, but I had no idea. So do your research, don't let it scare you. Just be educated on, on what uh, dangers there are because there are quite a few in that area. Uh, we did all of our shopping. So they, a lot of their shopping centers they have, you imagine, you know, our shopping mall, but having a Walmart attached to it or a Target attached to it. So you go to one place, you can get everything done, which is really nice. Um, and uh, food's not very different. Um, you know, I would say their, their portion sizes, holy cow, are very small compared to ours. Um, and I remember, so when I, when I first got to Adelaide, they took us to Subway. And, you know, it was our first sort of meal for lunch. And I just ordered, you know, a typical sub and a drink finish my drink, I go back up to refill my drink, and the lady's like, oh, are you going to pay for that? And I'm like, oh, no, I'm just getting a refill. And she's like, uh, you need to pay for that. I'm like, I remember looking at her and being like, you guys don't do free refills here? She's like, no, that's, that's the case for everywhere, McDonald's, you name it. You have to pay for every single drink, um, which is probably a good thing. You know, I end, uh, ended up honestly losing a little bit of weight out there just because I ate less, a lot less. Uh, and it took a while to get used to for sure, but I mean, it was very beneficial. Um, and But their food is amazing, honestly. They have the best 
you will notice a huge difference. Their ice cream is 20 times better than ours. Their chocolate, so much better. Um, they have um, they have these things. It's almost like their hamburger in terms of like it's available everywhere. It's very quick and easy, but they call them like meat pies. And they're really good. I mean, I, I love them. You'll love them. Everybody loves them. Um, just delicious. Um, and you also get a chance to eat. I mean, I had Thai food. I had Korean food. I had um, a whole bunch of different kinds of, of food over there. So lots of different styles, uh, cultures. Um, but in general, other than if I was just walking around, I really didn't feel like I was anywhere different. Um, unless I was talking to someone, of course, because that's their biggest uh, difference between us is their accent. Um, and I'll, I'll touch on that here in a little bit, but uh, it really didn't feel too different. Um, a lot of the same um, products and um, slightly different brands and stuff like that, but in general, a lot of the same uh, products. 